Hi everyone, um, I'm Andrea. I'm the event catalyst for the Immersive series and your host for today's gathering. And I'm tuning in from Bucharest, Romania. I want to thank you for being here and swiftly introduce our guests for today. Mick is a facilitator, career coach, and actor with 20 years as a performer, one year with Cirque du Soleil, five years, uh, seven years in tech, five years plus in education, has reread Jurassic Park nine times, is training for a 15K race, and wishes he had a cat. Um, thank you and welcome, Mick. Thank you so much. Great to see everybody. Our global audience is really exciting. Hi. Yay. <laughs> yes, my wife is super allergic, so we can't have a cat. We do have two small children, so that's cool. Uh, they, uh, We're not allergic to them. <laughs> that would be rough. Uh, so yeah, I'm really glad to be here today. I'm just going to be sharing some ideas that I've had in my time as a career coach. I have been a career coach now for three uh, and closing in on four years. I started being a career coach right before the pandemic happened. So all the people who are trying to get jobs as that started, we, so it was <laughs> a really good time to learn the ropes. Um, and I've learned a lot of things, including about uh, salary negotiations and just sort of standing up for ourselves. And so that will be the focus of today. I'm really hoping you come out of this with some practical, tangible things that you can use um, to First of all, be considering yourself as a superhero and a real badass. And secondly, to be able to actually start the conversation. As Andrea mentioned at the very beginning, like we're all in varying stages in our careers from in the process of looking at promotions and raises to even just considering it or thinking about what our development looks like. And so, again, I really hope that you come out of today with some real tangible things. Um, I'm going to try to uh, wrap up at five minutes until the hour. So just 50 minutes from now until the end. I'll have a short survey at the end just to see how I did and see what your thoughts are on expansion or any other ideas. But this is really, um, again, an immersive series. To, so to get you in and actually working with these ideas, um, we'll have a, a bit of solo time to do some thoughts and then also some group time some uh, partner time to bounce ideas back and forth. And so, yeah, uh, let's go ahead and dive in. Um, as Andrea said, I've been a career coach. I've worked in tech. I've done a lot of things in a lot of different companies, including being a window washer and including touring on the road with Cirque du Soleil for a year. So I've done a lot of stuff. I've seen a lot of different working environments and I've only done a very tiny bit. So if anything that I say today doesn't quite apply to your working environment, um, then I would love to hear from you afterwards about how I can adapt some of the ideas. I think a lot of the stuff will be fairly straightforward uh, to utilize in lots of different working situations. But um, I think one of the things I'll be emphasizing again at the end is the importance of getting these ideas out of our heads and into our practices with other people. So coaching is really, really helpful for feeling more confident, first of all, but also just getting our ideas ready. So as we start, I would love to hear from each of you just in the chat why you're here today. What was it about a raises, promotions, um, potentially even just a job offer negotiation uh, that was shared in the original sort of pitch for this um, immersive? Where, where are you here today? Go ahead and share that in the chat. Awesome. So Natalia is preparing. It's, this stuff is going to be relevant very soon. Uh, Sky mentions dreading these conversations and get, getting tongue tied. Yes, this is really tricky stuff. Um, yes, a raise for your second part time job. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then, yeah, promotion is in the past. Um, and yeah, does feeling like you deserve to be well paid? You do. You do. We do really remarkable things and we really benefit our organizations and our own businesses. If you are like me and also have a side gig or multiple side gigs. <laughs> um, 
Yes. Uh, uh, every time I try to negotiate for a salary, I was told that this is not possible. And this is pretty common. Um, trouble negotiating raises, just being more comfortable in general, great. Talking about money makes is feeling awkward sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, ah, Marisol, thank you so much for that. Little experience on paper. Yes, I hope this is actually going to be really valuable for you because you're going to be able to see more of it. Um, really appreciate everybody sharing. These are all like super common, first of all, but all, <laughs> like uh, that doesn't mean that they're not very important. So I just want to reflect to everybody that your experience is really important for you, but also a lot of other people experience it. So I want to do a little bit of scene setting before we actually dive in. Um, and the first question I just have to, to start with for, for myself and for our discussion and for our work today is, why is this important? Why is this important? Um, advocating for ourselves and the ability to do so, I think, is incredibly important. And I'm going to share three reasons why. So I, the first, uh, I think one of the contextual things is that people who look like me, white men, white cis men get rewarded uh, sort of automatically um, or much more easily than most people who don't look like me. And I think that's a problem. Obviously, that's a huge problem. Um, we, uh, or people who look like me are already in power and they, uh, they like to support other people who, who look like me. And um, so, that means that everybody who doesn't look like me and a lot of people who do look like me don't necessarily get access to this thing. And I think the first reason that's really important to talk about like why self-advocacy matters so much is because growth and raises and promotions and new responsibilities, these are available to everybody. Everybody has these opportunities or should have access to these opportunities. And, but people who look like me don't have to do it as much. And so, <laughs> when people expect me to have a high expectations, they will bring up these conversations for me, right? Or other white guys. Um, and so if we, all, everybody else, if we learn how to speak up for ourselves, if we learn how to advocate for ourselves, we get access to those same conversations. That's available for us. It's available in most like progressive working environments that aren't, you know, horrible. And so just learning how to speak up gives us access to this thing that, that so many of us could be enjoying and gives us a chance to be actually rewarded. Um, Ana Maria just mentioned um, our performance, you know, being rewarded for our performance will really increase, as she said, our motivation and will really help us understand our second thing, my second idea, which is that in all of us are worthy and the more we advocate for ourselves, the more we get to see ourselves be rewarded, which actually reflects back to ourselves and makes us go, oh, I'm worthwhile. I can't tell you how many conversations I've had as I've thought about career changing myself, where I've said, well, you know, and I talk about the various things, ah, you know, I'm fairly new at this, or I haven't done it for a long, I haven't had the official title, or so on. And other people have said, you're kidding, right? You're good at this, you're good at this and this and this and this. And it took talking to other people to understand that I actually had a bunch of worthwhile skills. And the more we actually stand up for ourselves and watch people reflect back to us like, oh, you deserve to just be in this conversation. The more we get to understand that we deserve it. And that makes it easier for us to just step into that place of confidence. And so that's one of the big reasons I think this is important work to do. The final reason is possibly the most important is that we all rise together. We all get better as a group. And um, the more of us that have these skills, the more of us can share them with people who aren't aware this is possible. And so I see today as almost like dropping a little piece of food dye into a big tall glass of clear water. It's gonna spread out amongst you and then hopefully each of you will be able to teach and share this with each other with other people in your network your friends your family members your lovers your kids your you know other colleagues and coworkers, and that this will you know just part of the spreading out of these skills and these techniques to help other people understand their own value their own worth and be able to advocate for themselves as well there's a lot of 
justice that is needed in the world and having access to, you know, better rewards is a big part of that justice. And I think, um, well, I'd really like for this to spread out and uh, be helping not just the people in this room, but everybody else as well. So spread these ideas, you know, there's nothing particularly special about them. I just hope that you get to engage with them and, and utilize them. So, okay, ah, my little, I have a little uh, tracker, uh, keeping track of our uh, uh, recording our conversation. It says I've been monologuing for nine minutes, which is unacceptable. So we're gonna actually dig into the immersive part of this immersive series, okay? So where do we start? How do we start to get access to growth, to build our confidence in our self-worth and to you know, own this thing so that we can start to teach others? We start with an inventory of how, what we've already got and what we're good at. So we're gonna start with our asset inventory, okay? Knowing what you're worth really makes it much easier to convince other people of what you're worth and help them learn what it is too. And so for uh, about seven minutes, uh, uh, Andrea is gonna share in the chat a link to our asset inventory worksheet. And in fact, for about seven minutes, you're each going to just fill out this worksheet, just dig into it a little bit. So go ahead and open it on your computers. Make, uh, use the file menu. If you're not familiar with Google Sheets, use the file menu to make a copy. And that asset inventory that Andrea has just shared will allow you to make your own personal copy of what your assets are. And it's a worksheet that will guide you through a number of questions that should help you uncover some of the value that you have. So open it up. If you have any questions about any of, of the prompts that are in it, uh, please put them in the chat. I'd love to answer them uh, here live on the call. But um, otherwise, it's a fairly straightforward worksheet. When we're done with this, we're going to talk through it with a partner. So I will be using the time to create some breakout rooms and so on. But go ahead, dive in, um, and I'll see about sharing a little bit of music as well. But um, this is just a walkthrough of both your current role or roles and then past roles as well. And some, some easy questions you can ask yourself to uncover all the value that you're already contributing, all the things that you're already really good at. So I'm gonna stop talking, I swear to God. And I'm gonna start a little timer for uh, seven minutes and then um, we'll move on to uh, uh, sharing these ideas with other people. If you have any trouble opening or creating your own copy of the asset inventory, um, please let us know in, in chat. Will you be playing? Um, do you have any song uh, ready? If not, I, I have one. Okay. We'll have to share. Oh, actually, I do. One sec. Oh, okay. Go ahead and share my audio.
Okay, we're going to wrap up in just about a minute. Get your last thoughts down now. Keep your asset inventory open. did not time that music to be that perfect, but that was perfect. Um, great. Okay, so I am going to be creating some breakout rooms. Um, I've just heard from someone that they can't actually participate just because they have um, an, enough other people around them that that would be really challenging. So um, I'm going to create some breakout rooms with um, two to three people. I think one group will actually have, um, actually, no. Um, ah, okay. So I'm going to move a couple people in with me and move some other people around. Apologies for a momentary delay. Okay, in one room we'll have, we're gonna get there. So go ahead and um, look at your sheets. Note if there's any um, anything in particular you'd like to get anybody else's feedback on. Um, those are the things to prioritize. We only have 10 minutes to share for this next piece. Um, I'm gonna actually have them auto close after 10 minutes. So I apologize for that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we'll come back to this room, do a quick retro just about what that was like. And um, yeah, I'm opening the rooms now. Discuss with your partner, see what things come up. Would love to hear what happens for you, what you share, um, what's helpful to talk about with somebody else. The breakout rooms are open.
please just click on the join room thing. See Minna and Jamela and Ruslan and Patricia still need to join their rooms. There we go. Well done. Breakout room. Thank you, Andrea. I love it when breakout rooms end and everybody comes back in at the last possible second. That's always a good sign. I'd love to hear just a quick retro, quick discussion. Anything uh, that you found useful about talking, anything that came up for you about uh, um, anything you've experienced, any of the assets that you've uncovered, um, please just go ahead and use the raise hand function in uh, Zoom and I'll see if I can uh, just call on a few folks. Um, what was it like to discuss your assets with a partner? What was it like to write down assets, period? Yeah, Natalia. Yeah, thank you for this um, exercise. I realized that I did it quite a few times recently since I'm looking for a job and <laughs> writing my CV. Um, yeah. What I really enjoy for, enjoyed from my breakout room is my partner in the room asked a great question what would you like to be known for that may be not obvious to others and then it opened up a space of exploration of yeah what is not that year uh, there in my cv that i can add on top of it yeah i enjoyed that thank you fantastic a great addition to the worksheet as well what would you like to be known for thank you for that anybody else Find, discuss anything, um, anything come up in discussion that you weren't expecting? Any questions? Yeah, Julia. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I, it went really fast. Um, and definitely could have used more time. But I think what came up for both of us was just, uh, I don't know, well, like imposter syndrome on both parts. And just not really speaking with confidence to our strengths and feeling like, I don't know, I was sort of with my body language downplaying the things that I was saying and feeling like, I don't know, I'm like this, but I wish it was, you know, I don't know how to do, you know, and she was like, wow, when I heard, you know, that you were a generalist, I really thought that that was a positive, but your body language was indicating otherwise. So I think too, it's, um, it's really internal, you know, how you accept uh, strengths that, I don't know, yeah, that like other people see as strengths, but you see as somehow needing to change them. So I think that's always a good reflection because it's something that I have control over and can like take more ownership of. Yeah, absolutely. And that is also one of those things that will change the more you do this work. Uh, as I said in our second point from before, you know, watching yourself advocate for yourself and say, hey, I deserve this is something that will change the way that you understand these things and adjust your actual experience. Um, Clarissa. Yeah, thanks so much, Mike. Uh, in our group, one thing that we started getting curious about is like how to portray or communicate like our more qualitative uh qualities <laughs> just another, another way of saying that uh you know like if we're caring empathetic uh kind you know these kinds of things great even creativity could be you know quality you know something that you can't like quantify so yeah these would be and those are things that yeah not everybody has either necessarily and so yeah how do you communicate that especially when it comes to getting paid more or getting paid uh, is kind of what we were getting curious about. Absolutely. Great question. I'd love to see a uh, minute. Is anything that bring anything up for you? Oh, it's Misty. It's Misty, um, thank you. Yeah, for that, I because I'm a very, I'm in a very creative role too. And I always try to try to tie the creative 
to some type of business objective. Like I found a new way to do X by using this creative method or this creative new training thing and it raised sales by this much you know like you have to tie it to some type of business outcome or something something that leads to money <laughs> or outcome because that's you know i mean that's you know what drives business and that's usually the best way to go about it if you can find something even to loosely string it together really agree there and also want to add on that um uh, business objectives can include things like uh, greater team sort of cohesion, uh, more ideas, um, leadership, uh, that's stuff that's not directly quantitative, but that the company values. Now, a lot of the stuff that we're talking about here, the assets, the things that we're saying, like, here's what matters, here's the stuff I'm good at. Let's tie this into the sort of bigger picture here, which is that the things that you do and the things that you are good at, the things that are on that asset inventory, those are things that create value. They create value for the people around you. They create value for the company that you work with. And they create value for your own experience, understanding, growth, development, and so on. We're not just learning and development uh, professionals for everybody else, but for ourselves as well. And that value that you're creating can be a bunch of, can operate in a bunch of different ways. And one of them is to grow the team's abilities, to help people raise this topic more often, right? Whatever the creative approach or things that you've done, the ways that you've shared it, I think the question is like, yeah, what, what has this done? What has this helped? And if it's not qualitative, that's fine. But being able to point to stuff that the business cares about, to, to, to Misty's point, is, is really important. So in the interest of time, let's move on. So we've got a few uh, short more minutes to discuss. Um, so one way of thinking about uh, what we're doing is that there's a sort of a three phase process, which is first, you understand what you're good at. Then you're going to understand how similar people are compensated or rewarded for being good at similar things. And then we're going to actually raise this discussion with the people that have control. And so just very briefly, I'd like to introduce a few ways that you can research and understand how other people are compensated. And so doing a, free, a bit of basic salary research uh, will really help you in bringing this up in to the people that matter, but also for yourself, understanding how other people are compensated for the work that you are good at. So my apologies, I am US based and I don't know a similar way to get some of the information for European citizens. And I know that's the majority of our of our crew. But for the US, we have a, a visa status, which is called the H1B. And the, that visa is for everybody from uh, overseas or outside of the US who wants to work in the country um, beyond a certain point needs to get a, a visa that says, they are allowed to work here. And h1bdata.info is a website that collects all of the employers that have sponsored H1B visas, the exact titles that they have used for those uh, visa sponsorships, and the areas in which those have, uh, you know, um, they've done that sponsorship. So New York, LA, Chicago, and so on. What this will tell you is what people with your title or a similar sized companies, maybe your competitors, maybe your company, what the people with that title have been paid in your area. So this is a really valuable thing for the US to check the very specific uh, details. People have to release this as part of their visa sponsorship. They have to say, here's how much we paid this person to perform this title. So that's one resource for you. Levels.fyi for your company or competitor companies and for your role as well. Now, this looks pretty complicated when you first start it, uh, when you open it up, but finding roles in the across this menu uh, and then typing in and figuring out how to use the, the pieces here to compare uh, your company, your title, and potentially even the area that you're in. It's a really valuable, really helpfully visual tool. So levels.fyi. And then finally is one that probably everybody, especially people who are in a job search should be aware of, which is glassdoor.com. I'm going to share all these in the chat right now. Uh, they're also in the one sheet that I'm going to be sharing with everybody uh, shortly. 
But Glassdoor is an incredibly useful site if you're not familiar with it. You, you do need to sign up for an account and you do need to share a little bit of uh, uh, um, information with them to get full access to salary data and other things. Um, but I think it's a real good trade <laughs> for some information. They're an incredibly useful site. They'll have salaries for many other companies. They'll have job postings that are there as well, but they'll also have interview questions and a lot more for individual companies that other people have shared. I did an interview with XYZ company. Here are the questions that they asked me. I work for XYZ company. Here's the salary that I uh, get. Um, and so Glassdoor is incredibly useful. Andrea has just shared the Get Paid What You're Worth one sheet. This is a single sheet that has all of the things we've talked about so far and researching the salary data. So this is all for everybody. You can go ahead and download that right now. So that's all we're going to dig into for salary research. Um, and I'm sorry we don't have more time to actually play around with that. But that is something that where you can look to see how people with your skills at your company, potentially, but also at your competitor companies or similar companies, how are those people being compensated? I also recommend looking at the levels slightly above you as well to understand sort of what development looks like. Now, lots of companies publish this information internally. Maybe you don't even need to go to these lengths, but that's there for you so you can understand how your work is valued. So we're running low on time. Uh, we're going to talk. We're going to do a bit of practice around um, bringing up these conversations. I'm going to reopen the same breakout rooms, but we're going to briefly discuss just what this looks like to actually start this conversation. The idea of making change in little personal ways is not a new one, as you can see. <laughs> like Mother Teresa had some uh, said, you know what? Just don't wait for permission. Okay, go and talk about this with other people. And so bringing up the conversation for a lot of people is very nerve wracking. And there's two frames I'd like to share with you today. Just there's, there's a million frames out there that you can go forward, but there's two that I think are really useful. Now, the first frame is a direct approach. And the direct approach, I think it's helpful to think about basically what you're communicating is this. Hey, I think I deserve a raise. I want to check for alignment. Here's some reasons some evidence. What are your thoughts? Now, this is very direct. Here's what I think I deserve. I want to make sure we're on the same page. I have some thoughts, some direct thoughts and evidence to share with you, but I want to know your thoughts. Now, this is opening a conversation with a goal. Okay, this isn't coming in and saying, hey, listen, if I don't get a raise, I'm out of here. This is saying, hey, I think I deserve a raise. This is very strong. This is very bold. This is not for everybody. I don't think I could use this approach. But if you're ready, especially if you're fed up, <laughs> this is a great approach to use. And the basic concept, that frame is right there. Now, there's a much more simpler approach, I think, for growth and development and focusing on that instead. And the frame for the growth approach is this. Regular growth, both in responsibility and pay, is important to me. Let's talk about what that looks like here. Let's just talk about this. So here's what matters to me, and I want to know how to go about that. Now, you'll see on the one sheet, there's a bunch of prompts for individual like ways to actually open this conversation. Now, since we are running low on time, and I apologize for that, um, I would like to for you to pick which one of these approaches, just while we're looking at it, which one of these approaches do you think is going to be yours? Note for yourself. We'll just take a minute to do this instead of five. Look at the one sheet as well. Maybe choose which of these openers you'd like to, to start with. Everybody's muted, so you can practice your delivery if you want. Which one of these matches most with your character? or what you're currently comfortable with. OK. 
Okay. So I'm going to reopen the breakout rooms. And what I'd like for you to do is, um, unfortunately, we're only going to have about seven minutes for this because we have to wrap up shortly. Um, so actually six. <laughs> um, role play a few conversations. What's it like to say the words out loud? How does it feel? Um, so say Julia and Clarissa are in a, a room, for example. Julia can say, okay, I'm gonna practice my approach. I'm gonna use line number three, in the one sheet. Blah, 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 blah. And then Clarissa, if she's willing, can say like, great, Julia, tell me more about why you think this is an appropriate time for a race. And then Julia could actually get into starting a conversation. Um, literally listening to other people can be really useful. So uh, don't, don't worry about doing this perfectly. This is not a chance. This is just an opportunity to practice. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the rooms. Um, I hope, uh, yeah, we have about six minutes for this. So use it how you will. Thank you. Go ahead and pause our recording again. March. Yeah. Oh, there's so much stuff that comes up as a part of these conversations. Um, thank you so much, everybody. Um, we're running. We're running out of time. In uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, that movie as a kid, when Willy Wonka says, "So much to see in so little time." That was always so painful to me as a child. I was like, no, I want to see it all. I'm so sorry we ran out of time and we didn't meet my goal of finishing five minutes early. Not even close. Um, I really hope that was useful. Talking with other people, as I said, is a really helpful part of this. So um, I would love to, to, to hear in our last couple of minutes, any strategies that came up for you for handling objections, anything around continuing the conversation or anything that was helpful or tricky about this for you, just in the last two minutes here. Would anybody like to share anything about what they experienced or saw, what they felt? And if not, that's totally fine. I can go. Um, I think yeah. like part of like what I shared with the group that I find tricky yeah. is that like I thought I was on the path of like promotion mm -hmm. and I was doing everything that was asked of me. And then when I thought we were having the conversation, I was never explicitly told like, no, this isn't happening this cycle because X, Y, Z. It was yeah. literally in the last 30 seconds of a one-to-one -one where my managers was like, oh yeah, well, uh, you're not eligible uh, this time. All right, yeah, see you later, bye. And I'm like, wait, what just happened? Yeah. Because according to our conversation, I was supposed to be in this cycle and now you just pushed me out another year, right? And so when I, I find when I bring it up, she gets kind of awkward and I was sharing with my group, which is weird because she's like the head of HR and aren't they supposed to know how to navigate these conversations? Um, yeah. So that's- and so I want to be mindful because when I just will state things and be direct, I get feedback of like, you're too direct. Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> you need to wear, put a, a velvet glove on that iron fist. And I'm like, what? Yeah. Yeah. I'm so sorry you're dealing with that. First of all, I think um, this is, this is a really helpful piece of context because I think it brings up a great final idea, which is simply that um as I was just discussing with Andrea before everybody else came back, um, uh, companies are capable of certain things and they're not capable of others. And we can't control what those are, obviously. And people have capabilities, <laughs> right? And qualities or, or competencies, things they're good at or not good at. And I think um, the importance of advocating for ourselves is that we get to speak up for what we need. And what we get back is hopefully what we're hoping for greater responsibilities, greater pay, and so on. But most importantly, regardless of what we get back, whether it's positive, negative, or in between, it's information. And now what you've gotten is information. And now you get to take that in and you get to then advocate based on that information. And part of your self-advocacy might be looking for a new job. You know, you've been given information about what your boss is, is capable of or competent with. And now that can turn into your regular sort of like, hey, uh, you know, um, I felt I brought this up in time for the last cycle. You know, I feel like this would be an appropriate time for right now. You know, I understand you have 
you know, like you can do what you can do. And then maybe in the coming months, every couple of months, bring, sending a new email with like, here's the new things I've taken on. Here's the additional things that I've done to fulfill these requirements. Documenting the process quite thoroughly uh, to make sure that there's no mistake next time. That's one thought. Another might be simply to say, you know what? I want to go somewhere where they're like bringing this up proactively. <laughs> you know, I don't have to work this hard. So since we're out of time, I really appreciate that. I think that's a really important final thought. Um, I will just say that this is the beginning of obviously of a journey. Like, and we've given, we've had very little time right now to actually dig into these ideas. None of this will go perfectly, but um, I really suggest that you, first of all, continue the asset inventory work, talk about it with your friends and colleagues and your partners, uh, talk about it with anybody who will listen because you will get so many new ideas about the things that you're good at and the things that uh, you want to be known for. This was shared before. So continue that work. Um, do your salary research. You will be surprised by what other people learn about what other people earn. And um, finally, like bringing up these conversations and just saying, hey, you know, even if very softly, I'd like to grow more here. What does that look like? Um, is always within your power. And if you need to discuss that with a coach, with a mentor, whoa, we have this great mentor program, right? So that this could be a, a fantastic series of conversations for them. Um, I am going to, to wrap things up there. The last thing I'll say is that I found a great quote in my research. Unfortunately, we don't have an attribution for this, but know your worth and add tax. Um, I really appreciate you all coming. Um, your quick feedback, I'm going to share uh, something in the chat for a quick feedback form. Um, if you're able to fill that out, sometime that would be really appreciated and i am always available to dig into these questions further or just get any thoughts from you um you know i i do this for a living um i'd be happy to support you for questions or whatever else you know totally uh, it's just a part of our professional you know network so please bring up anything that would be useful um i will stop talking we've gone on long enough i really hope this was useful for you and uh yeah it was great to talk so much it was very useful thank you um, thank, thank you, you. Thank bye bye everyone for yeah. coming thanks Meg. Thank thanks everybody have thank a lovely you day thank you ciao ciao thank you bye 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 bye, -bye.